Grade 7 Math, number 9.3a, Area of a Composite Figure. Last year in sixth grade, we learned that a composite figure is made up of two or more simpler figures, like triangles, quadrilaterals, or semicircles. To find the area of a composite figure, we divide it into simple, non-overlapping figures. We find the area for each simple figure and total them for the area of the entire composite figure. Drawing lines to separate the figures will help us look carefully at each composite figure before dividing. So first thing we need to do, and you should have these written in your notes, like I usually say I wrote them on the inside cardboard cover of my spiral for school. That way I had all my formulas in one neat little spot, okay? So if you can copy these down, maybe you can pause the video right now, and write these down so that you've got them in one spot for safekeeping, okay? But we're going to use these formulas to help us find the area of these composite figures, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the first one. This one says that one square is equal to one foot square. Right up here, it's got a little key, okay? And it shows that we've got this shape. It's almost like an arrow, but the point has been cut off, isn't it? Now, some people might be tempted to cut it along here and make triangles. See? And you could do that and then pretend that this is one big rectangle with two little triangles. You could do it that way. Or you can see that this figure right here is a trapezoid. So we could just do this all in one movement instead of doing two triangles, see? So what I see is a trapezoid right here, see? It's kind of standing on its side, and I see a rectangle. So I need the formula for the area of a trapezoid, and I need the formula for the area of a rectangle. Now, what this means is half of the height needs to be multiplied to base 1 plus base 2. That's what B1 and B2 mean. So the height is where I drew the orange line. The height is going to be 3. See? It's as if it was this way, and we said the height was 3. Okay? So that's an important number. And then base 1 is this side right here. Okay? Again, if I turn it sideways, this is base 1, and that's base 2. Okay? So base 1 is 6, and base 2 is... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means 6 plus 12. That means 18. So now we've got half times 3 times 18. Well, 3 times 18 is 54, so now we need half of 54. 54 divided by 2, or half times 54, is 27 square feet. Because remember, it was all in square feet, according to the key. All right. Now all we have to do is 10 by 6, this rectangle, and we're done. And we add them together. 10 times 6 is 60. Now we add the 60 and the 27, and we get 87 square feet, or feet squared. That's the total, 87 square feet. All right, let's try another one. Now this one says that one square is one centimeter, okay? So what I saw, these lines weren't here, what I saw was a semicircle and two rectangles. Well, that's not that hard. We did circles in the last video. Circles are pi r squared, but because this is half of a circle, we need to divide that in two, don't we? If we did this, just the numerator part, that would give us the area for an entire circle. We don't want that. We want a half circle, so we're going to divide it by two. So pi times the radius times the radius. So we count how many boxes? One, two, three, Four. And my drawing was a little off. I meant for it to be four complete boxes, okay? So the radius is going to be from the center of the circle to here, and that's four. So we've got pi times four times four over two. Well, four times four is 16. So now I've got pi over 16 divided by two. Well, I can cross-cancel this two as a one and this 16 as an eight, and we end up with pi times 8 over 1, which is the same thing as pi times 8. 3.14 times 8 is 25.12. Now, I could have done 3.14 times 16, 
but it would have been another digit to multiply and it would have taken me a little longer. And by cross canceling really quick, I was able to just do pi times 8 really quick, see? So now we know it's approximately 25.12, right? Because we used pi, we got to use the approximate symbol. Let me fix that. All right? So it's approximately 25.12 centimeters squared, okay? Then we've got a rectangle and a rectangle. We've got one rectangle that we need the length and width, 7, and this side is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 7 times 8 is 56, so that's 56 square centimeters. And this one is 6 by 8. 6 times 8 is 48 centimeters squared. So now we just add the 25.12, the 56, and the 48, and we get 129.12 centimeters squared. And that's an approximate, isn't it? Because of the pi added to it, this is an approximate 129.12 centimeters squared. See? So we just broke it into three parts. We did half of the area of a circle by dividing it in two, okay? All right, this one says that one square is equal to one inch squared, all right? And it says that this right here along here is 17. Well, I can follow the line straight up and see that this one is curving down into this angle at the same spot as this one. So the top one must also be 17, see? I can just tell by following the line, see? Now this one can be split into a, a triangle here and a triangle here, but what I see is a parallelogram on top of a parallelogram. So instead of splitting this into rectangle, triangle, triangle, rectangle, triangle, triangle, and having to figure out all those measurements, I just see two two parallelograms. The first parallelogram has a height of four, and this one has a height of three. See? And for parallelograms, we do base times height, okay? So for this top one, we're going to do the 17 base times four. See? 17 times four is 68, so the top Parallelogram is 68 inches squared. The bottom one is 17 with 3 for a height. 17 times 3 is 51. It's 51 inches squared. We add the 68 to the 51 and get 119 inches squared. See? That wasn't too hard, was it? If you follow the formulas, you should be okay. All right? And you should, you should be able to do this, I think. So just follow the formulas and take your time. And just remember, break it into as small, into as few pieces as you can. Don't break it into six pieces. See if there's two parallelograms, see? And don't break this into a rectangle, triangle, and triangle. Realize that it's a trapezoid, okay? All right, I'll see you next video. We're going to talk about using these to help us solve a word problem. Bye.